Hello everyone, my name is Elena and welcome to XFounders channel. XFounders is a pre-accelerator for Web3 startups where ambitious founders meet, learn and share. To get more information about us, please see the description to this video. Today, I'm joined by Linda Decacha, who is the compliance officer, director and co-founder of Swap's app. We already have a few videos published on our platform with the CEO of the company, George, and the CMO of Swap's app, Alex. But today with Linda, we're going to talk about a very fascinating topic, which is compliance and all the legal things in the Web3 and Web2 spaces. Linda, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure. Great, great. So uh, I suggest we start with a very brief introduction of yourself, of your background. Yes. So as, as you already mentioned, I'm co-founder, director and compliance officer at SwapSap. Uh, but my profession uh, is uh, I'm a lawyer and I am a camps, uh, a, a camps certified money laundering expert. So that two fields bring me together with my partner and we started this uh, process to be a pay payment processing solution provider. So uh, I have been always like keen on learning and uh, to achieve new perspective and certificates. So uh, ACAMS or certified money laundering specialist, specialist was the key field for me to fit in SWAPs and my legal background because I have worked in court, in law office, and thanks to my mentors, uh, I have been able to go through this process with a good result. And I have also worked at EY or Ernst & Young in forensic field. So mm -hmm. we audited banks. So that was also my background to fit at SWAPs up. So, and uh, I, yes, as I said, I like to learn new things and I have already started the new certificate, which is called Certified Crypto Asset Anti-Financial Crime Specialist. It's also by CAMS or uh, ACAMS, that is one of gold standards in this field. So hopefully in half, in term of half year, I will achieve it. And it's very useful for our company and general uh, for me. Wow. So that's that kind of introduction about myself. No, great. I mean, it sounds like a very long way. And well, congrats and good luck with this recent yes. certificate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, Linda, and talking about like Swap's app as such, right? Like as a product. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Is that right that you started as a purely Web2 product? Yes, that's, that's for sure, because in general, if we look from regulator, regulatory framework, that Web3 is mostly regulated by U, U, A, U, uh, European Union. So uh, Web3 is the future and no one can would, will be able to skip it. But still, the Web2 is centralized centralized system while web3 is decentralized so that's why that's the fragile balance between web2 and web3 and that's also why we have to be aware and prepare for web3 and how to adapt web2 in web3 while still to be uh, to comply with the regulations Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I mean, you touched upon a very important point because some people tend to think that if we're talking about like complete decentralization, it means that there is no space for regulation. Um, I mean, which is a very contradictory opinion, right? So what yes. is your take on it? Um, can we in any way marry regulation and decentralization in the uh, Yes, uh, I think that regulation and de decentralization can exist together while it's legally decentralized. So it means that uh, we are there, are, we still are on a stage where the regulation is open and there 
will be further moves to implement 100%. Like Mika, for example, that will be like, we have to implement it in 2024. It's already in action, but uh, we have to prepare it. But with only Mika, it won't help because Mika is more based on centralized anyway. So we have still to find the solutions, the tools, how to bring together those data. Because uh, if we talk about decentralization, it's like based on transpar transparency and trustless uh, networks. So it means like the information is not owned by one source, but it's like spread together in a blockchain, like spread in a blockchain. So it's big difference with a web two solution at the moment. And if we talk from the compliance point of view uh, it's like uh, the in the, uh, the, the the government and regulation is like uh, threats to the centralized system that's how we have always been told but with this new steps with improvements with the tools we want we as a compliance and those tools want to show that it's okay to be compliant in web three and to to adapt uh, solutions or uh, the regulations from web two. So because if we talk from web two point of view, there is know your customer, for example, that when you gather all the data, you own them, you gather, you, you put them in the, your system. But with decentralized, it's like uh, mm, you have to prior prioritize privacy, security, and control because it's completely vice versa who owns the data. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest issue between Web 2 and Web 3. It's those protocols and uh, yes, how you will regulate them to fit in web three world, that it's that it's uh, future, and it it will be impossible to avoid it, and it is the best solution we know so far. But it means that tools and the IT system has been further than the regulation, mm -hmm. so it will take time for companies to be fully complained in web in web three because lack of the regulatory regulatory has usually been uh, later because mm -hmm. while the process goes down it's like they know the problem and only the regulatory regulatory framework comes from problems like uh, the silicon wallet for a bank like the ftx that was the reason why there is Mika in place now. Okay, Mika started in 2018, but why they finalized in May? Because there was a lot of issues going on in, uh, in the market and failures and the risks coming up. So that like, um, how to say, uh, kept those steps faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which also yeah. underlines the importance of well being up to date with all that's happening in the regulatory field i mean for web3 startups right mm -hmm. we need to we need to keep track of what's happening okay yes. i mean you, you just keep mentioning mika so i i really can't turn a blind eye on this yeah. uh, on this new and revolutionary basically mm -hmm. regulatory framework so Let's talk a bit about it. Um, what does the final approval of Mika uh, and its entry into force actually mean uh, for those Web3 startups who want to operate or who already operate within the European Union? Yes, yeah, so it's kind of clear that the upcoming Mika regulation poses kind of threats, significant challenges to the new companies and startups, because the most current solution are too centralized, mm -hmm. uh, Mika solution. Uh, so it means we already like touch the topic that we have to adapt and find the solutions. And that's kind of also the, the key about Mika. One of the main issues is a lack of adopted compliance solutions. 
there it's like some already coming our way how to to gather kyc data mm -hmm. and not to like when the oh like customer is like the owner of the data uh the mm, because the when you gather data as we do it in web 2 it's like very centralized and the data can lead to uh, and it's against the principles of decentralized gathered data so gdpr which are kind of very important mm -hmm. that is the topic mika uh, is like centralizing and anyway mika is more or less centralized and uh my my I, my opinion is that there will be further eu regulations uh, do to line up like there is mika won't cover mika won't cover uh, everything and there will be more regulations coming up because Mika is for European countries, mm -hmm. so it's kind of it means that uh, if you if you have license issued uh, in any of European country, you can conduct business with the cross border options to any of European country. But there is Lithuania, there is Estonia, there is like a lot of other countries, and each country has their separate uh, rules for cryptocurrencies at current moment. So. Yes, we have time all to prepare all countries how to adapt, but still I'm kind of, in my opinion, I think that one size fits all the reg regulatory approach uh, might, might not be like the best solution. So it's still, yeah, it, it's one of the best regulatory crypto framework in the world mm -hmm. current situation, but we talk about big field and uh, it's strict regulated it's centralized and still there will be problem how to adopt it to fit the this framework mm -hmm. but what what exactly do you mean by it's too much that's uh, too much centralized on the continent? because that's it, still uh, uh it's like uh no there will be still from Mika primary challenges to find compliance solutions that meet Web3 tailors and specific needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but for me, for example, as a founder of a Web3 company, mm -hmm. how did Mika change the situation? What exactly changed for me um, as for, for a Web3 founder? Uh, yes, the, like uh, you have... No, as a founder, I can speak uh, more from compliance compliance perspective. Yeah. Sure. So, that that the, the decentralized means that the you the you as a company are not owner of that data. Data is like the the spread in the blockchain, and the client is like more owner as the data. It's like completely changes the system, the flow, how mm -hmm. we we know from web two perspective. So there is. I can mention the solution, um, for example, for those KY, KYC and KY, uh, KYT data. There is, let me be precise to, it's like, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, we can, that, that, that uh, to comply in this field, there is a specific solution now that is active and very useful. It, it's called uh, self sovereign identity. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's the, the new future that uh, web two adapts to web three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, it, it uses, uh, it's not, it's collects data uh, from web three perspective. And uh, the, like if web three relies on the decentralized networks, uh, it means it secure channels to communicate with the real world. And uh, the common solution uh, would be the self-sovereign identity because users uh, are more controlled over their data than now with the Web2 solutions. So the futures are more like user-controlled data and wallet. So 
our A or you, you, if you ask me as a new startup company for Web three's perspective, it means you have to think uh, how to do, those gather those data those data in more control of the client mm -hmm. uh, like uh, user user controls mm -hmm. and uh, as we see it, the biggest is to sit at the table at the beginning at the be beginning when you develop your product already with legal and compliance uh, heads by the table because when you develop the product you have to be aware of requirements if you just think about the product without those requirements it's like takes a lot of risks and re reduce after because you have to like one is you develop fantastic product but then comes your legal or compliance advisor and says, no, sorry, you haven't uh, thought about uh, that. Uh, that has been owned by users, for example. So it takes time to redo it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, amazing. So you, you mentioned the product requ requirements and the compliance requirements, right? So um, shall we take maybe an example of Swap's app so um, what exactly do you need to comply with being more a Web2 company who is trying also to integrate some elements of the Web3, right? Yes. So the one is uh, to be careful about uh, uh, gathering data of GDPR. Mm -hmm. So one approach or advice is to use more holistic approach of, to protect those data. Uh, the second was, as I said, is to use that self-sovereign identity that is already solution or tool that is similar if you may, might know SAMSA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, just it's like uh, there are in a market already tools that is mm -hmm. similar or competitors, but it's more used with the Web3 solutions. Mm -hmm. And they, mm, yes, they, they, they have the few features that uh, they adopt in that it's that covers Mika all requirements mm -hmm. and uh, still you are compliant with uh, any other requ requirements and um, it's like uh, that's the foundation basically yeah 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 that's correct mm -hmm. and uh, actually it's it's kind of from we can of course might talk about how to do any other things uh, like how to take risks because me as a compliance, I have to be aware of our comp company is compliant under uh, background and the regulatory framework that we, we, we grant our license and we don't have reputational risks. And we we are like, that's that's how, it, how I see my work, I have to, they keep on track on daily because we have a lot of laws, a lot of requirements, internal rules in our system, and we have to review them and the situation in the market are changing. And uh, what I personally struggle with is me as a compliance working in crypto field have to 100% understand what is blockchain. Sure. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what, where I don't have, you like the, might not have the best flows that I link together everything. That's why we have a team. Mm -hmm. And the crucial is to have team because web three, it's like mass adaption. It's like you have to, to do a lot of things. Uh, it's like you have someone or usually with a legal and compliance framework at the table when the product is developed and uh, consider uh, all like uh, the IT internet or uh, internet protocol workers mm -hmm. with a very high background and skills also is like very crucial for me to work with they could help me to tell me the technical issues while i have to link together with the requirements 
and how it goes together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, mainly Web3 is like technology. So in a team, you have to have professionals in technology field because it's blockchain. It means it's it's like uh, something in the air yeah. and you have to... Yeah, it's a do... completely new architecture, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, with only laws and uh, requirements and internal rules, it's like impossible to do a work a work together. Mm -hmm. It's more technical and all those, all those solutions also, they are technical. So only you have to show them on a paper compliant and do the work but still it's very technical process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and you know there is also such a legal like approach the principle of um, regulating businesses rather than technologies rather than protocols right so yeah um, it's very much in line with what you've just said because we need to make sure that the technology is there and it works as it it is supposed to work right yeah the yeah same time, we need to comply with the real world regulations to protect yeah. the interests of investors of and users yeah it's like you have to be aware of web3 market and still trust the dynamics because the web3 and the technology is very dynamic and it's also that the, the same fragile balance between the compliance legal part and technology part you have like to trust technology because it's something you might you may not on your own uh, uh, like go in details for for me that's why there is team there is professionals and they have to sit on the same table and work together because the compliance might not know all the technical skills, the, the, the same with the legal and the same with the marketing. They all have the skills, how they see the product, the Web3 product and the company, the startup have to work, but they have to uh, to to go in details, in express opinion and put get together those minds for the company, for the startup, for the product to be super, to be be like uh, developed uh, as market is willing to receive. Mm -hmm. Because why there came Web3 in the market? Because Web2 is like already like a history. It's everything changes really dynamic. The future of Web3 is already in action and as I read, uh, it's by 2030, it's going to be 1.7 billion or two. There's something very, very high is <laughs> with Web3 going on because everyone trusts Web3. It's wonderful opportunity for us, for ev everyone who is starting. But still, it's... Um... It's still Wild West. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. But my, maybe that's why there is they give us time and those who start now and are compliant. Well, and they have chosen, yeah, they go high. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's I think. Uh, no, this is why it is crucial not to just replicate what we have in Web2, right? And just start using it in Web3 because it needs a very particular, very specific approach to regulate yeah. those products that are being developed. But Linda, for example, like, let's just come back to the example of Swap's app. Mm -hmm. uh, you as a payment solution, right? So do you need um, a license in every single jurisdiction you operate in? And uh, how hard was this process in general? Yes. Yes, there are countries, jurisdictions where you need license where, uh, to conduct business. But with a MICA coming in force, uh, uh, there is no need to have European Union license in every country. That's first. The second is how you do your marketing. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the meaning of conduct business. If client comes to us, we can on onboard and take them. Of course, there's usually restricted countries. Mm -hmm. And there is countries where, like America, 
and not only I can say in America, but the states, the a lot of states where you have to have the license. And there is, for example, New York and uh, Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken, to remember that there is a restricted in general. Mm -hmm. So it means you it's and it's changing daily. There is like gray list, uh, blacklist, and it's uh, a changes it. So in general, or in frankly speaking, you can't conduct business, but there is restrictions and there, uh, there are restrictions and there are like UK, they want you to be FCA registered to conduct business there. Mm -hmm. So, and it like, that's, that's, that's the story of meaning or interpretation, conduct business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how, how, in how many countries uh, do you currently operate? So we operate in a lot of countries, but this is like, we provide our service. Okay. That means we have license. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, a lot of countries it means we, we can we are not restricted to work in many countries we have our own restricted list uh, with our licenses but um, we cannot do marketing in all because if you do marketing it means it's like more conducting business Mm -hmm. I see I see no I was just trying to match you know the number of countries you're currently present in uh, number of licenses that you needed to get to, to uh, no no we are currently working from European license for from okay. Canadian ah, okay. license so it covers quite a lot okay so you have a single license that kind of helps yeah you. and we anyway we use risk-based approach when we onboard clients okay Okay. So there is an option that you do it with on a breeze based approach, which is, which is compliance allows it. I see. I see. This is clear. So, okay. You chose the European jurisdiction, right? The EU jurisdiction. Yeah. To yeah. Uh, what is your advice to Web3 founders when choosing their jurisdictions for their operations? What does this decision need to, to, be, to be depended upon? Uh, yeah, I think that the, you have to understand the product, what is the product, and then to have a look on the requirements, uh, how they have been adapted, because there is at the moment, if we look, there is a, a lot of a lot of uh, countries which are we can call easier and heavier on compliance rules, but there is a lot of things that is uh, that you have to look at who can be owner who can be director who like local not local so you have to understand the team you have to understand if conduct business from means you have to maintain an office mm -hmm. so if you want to maintain an office will you have employees who will work there uh, can you comply with the requirements with uh, the share with the capital uh, with uh, because the capital usually is also on the minimum and maximum uh, regarding what what is your product if you are crypto exchange service provider mm -hmm. or if you are MSB like money service provider uh, or uh, the payment solution provider so those are all requirements that you have to have a look but in general it's kind of impossible to work only with one one license mm -hmm. and to to work a world a work world worldwide okay so usually you can start with one but it's impossible to work worldwide worldwide with one so you will have anyway to have many licenses to cover as much countries as you can uh, because each country has regulations and uh, restrictions uh, who can be your client who cannot Mm -hmm. and it's like kind of process you have to do research to understand the budget mm -hmm. because it's very vital or crucial to understand the budget but you can there is hong kong licenses are very good fantastic and they are good at web3 but they are expensive you have to understand what is your investor side, how much money do you have? Can you like have it? Can you maintain the license? Mm -hmm. Because so this, this is 
basically let's say the first criterion right so mm -hmm. what, what are the others for example like taxes what yeah are... that's um it if you that there is not not in a country where our license is like estonia you are not vat applicable mm -hmm. or if you provide cryptocurrency exchange but you have for example of course social tax income tax uh those taxes yeah but uh i'm i might not have information about other countries but if you help yeah it's like but uh there is a usually like uh better tax countries that is that the taxes are less and it's more profitable so that's also one of topics that everyone is searching for the same Hong Kong it's kind of good with the yeah with the taxes and it's higher price you have to invest more to get the license and requirements are high the standards are high but at the end of the at the end of the day you are happier That's because true. the expenses in general after and taxes are less mm -hmm. So oh, it's yeah 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 just continue <laughs> no it's like yeah it's 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 huge research based on what is your product and what is your investment amount mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh because you also mentioned like this easy and difficult or heavy jurisdictions right so yeah. could you name just a few maybe i'm we, we already mentioned some easy ones right uh, yeah talk about the the difficult ones where would you not recommend considering opening a company uh won't recommend actually i have always thought where to, <laughs> to recommend where to open not not where not to um uh yes 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 uh, actually the for example also estonia it's like it's very high requirements to maintain license in estonia they changed rules last year uh in the law how you can get the license and uh, they increased share capital they had the stricter you rules of compliance uh, and directors that, that about their office etc so the question you can answer is if you can provide and be compliant with the requirements, if your director is a resident, if you maintain office there and it's not a, and there is employees working from there, if you, if you have investment or you have money to put as a share capital, then there is no bad country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's easier to work from Lithuania, for example, because there are, the requirements are, are lower. But in this kind of perspective, we, we see uh, Estonia as a higher income in a uh, crypto market. And they changed last year you, rules because they were inspected by Monival and they did not want, want to be in gray list, that one, one aspect. And the second was they already knew about Mika and the drafts, though they already put Mika requirements in the current license uh, requirements. Okay. And yeah, and it, it's like how you look on that things. If you went through the process, it means you are qualified cryptocurrency company, in high country but if you talk about like those easy countries as i may say uh, from the sources i have read it's asia more or less mm. we can look like asia direction and the middle east those are the countries but that i can say are more easier so it's like well hong kong once again hong kong, Singapore, Singapore, dubai yeah. Obviously, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And let's talk about the United States maybe for a moment. Um, like, um, I mean, we've all heard the news, right? The SEC mm -hmm. is like putting a lot of pressure on on the crypto companies right now. So, what what's your take on it? How? Uh, how I think the United States states with the recent crypto world news and failures as i can say has 
taken up the risk because it's huge country and in general USA has always been like the top top but uh, since those failures and uh, since they don't have haven't don't have so high regulation they don't have mica they don't have a lot of regulation and they can't uh, fasten it up i think they are that i don't think that may, maybe the country is in worse situation but the companies from there are because uh, they are strictly regulated but they still don't have the crypto general rule they still have to adapt and uh, as you know there is always a story about taxes in in usa which are very high and we can act as a company from estonia on board usa so we have to maintain license there and uh, yes it's not so easy to receive it mm -hmm. the license so yeah. all right and then um okay if i'm a web3 startup who plans to launch our own token mm -hmm. what would you say like how hard it is is it like what jurisdiction should we choose to do um, about jurisdiction and specified in tokens i might not provide the answer but anyway the token it's it's the story not how only to create it because there is a lot of information even in Google how you can like do it on sell yourself. But to maintain the token, that's the story because the same FTX problem or failure, they did not have the reserve. So what comes also with the token is you have to maintain reserve. That's what also Mika is requiring to maintain reserve i think it was one to one uh because yes this the problem is that everyone want now after ftx failure and uh wallet uh, silicon wallet bank is that they understand that we have to protect consume consumer uh, clients like users while before it was uh, not so deeply understood it was because also because of not fully regulated the crypto world is changing it's very dynamic and regulators and law is not so dynamic it takes time and those who understand it uses uses the gap uses the privilege of dynamic solution of it and crypto world so that's that's kind of where 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 the regulators and government can struggle they will never be as fast as uh, the technology the crypto world and the market in general no yeah absolutely absolutely and every client user or consumer anyway, anyway how we call them is the one who will be at the risk and any startup company or already working crypto company has to take the risk in behalf of the client and with the web3 world that's kind of a bit changing because they want the user to take like their own responsibility with the gathered data with the blockchain with the information spread in blockchain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay okay i mean yeah this, this is very important very clear yeah it's, um, yeah it's, and just yeah go going yeah sorry if you yeah. have no it's okay you can <laughs> okay yeah i mean just going further in one of the last questions actually so um you underlined the importance of well understanding in a very proper way uh, what exactly you need to comply with as a web3 mm -hmm. company right so the the earlier you know it the better so we, which means that web3 startups they need to resort to occasional help of lawyers or compliance officers right but my mm -hmm. question is, okay, so I do get some advice from uh, different specialists and experts. I obviously invest a lot of money into it. But when is the right moment to hire a compliance officer? 
like to oh, the, actually the compliance officer you have to hire at the beginning because if you have a company and you have a license it means you already have a compliance officer because it's one of the requirements to receive oh. license so but if you talk about to have help from the compliance officer not only like that we know who is working with us and who we can seek help that as i already mentioned you have to have it from the beginning uh if it's like uh, if it's not like your employee you have to outsource or ask questions at the beginning at the time when the product is developed because uh, that's the risk uh, of developing the product investing time and money and not fully be aware of like small details requirements regarding the load uh, and then you have to redo it and if we we know how hard it is to develop anything every changes it means protocols it means hard, hard uh, work work hours it means uh, conversations tests so and if you make a mistake not to be compliant in any field of, from the regulatory framework because you did not ask or because you did not know it's like a failure and that's like a waste of money and time so my advice would be that you have to have experts in compliance and legal field, field from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's quite, it's very vital uh, to have it. And uh, the if the compliance and legal legal consultant or employee have background in IT field. Uh, or he has been involved in any kind of blockchain companies before, it's like, take it, <laughs> take this person because it's very, very important to understand for from compliant to understand the blockchain in general, general the fintech world, the, that to be like technical with the technical skills. Yeah, I mean, my, my question is where to find these people? Yeah, but that's uh, where to find that's the, the app. Yeah, you actually, that's like word of mouth could be one. Yeah, that's you amazing. Can search, yeah, LinkedIn, but uh, it's it's not so easy because it's kind of anyway new world. For example, I, I already know that I will take the there is a blockchain expert which takes 10 weeks and it's uh, the European tech school. It's the certificate that gives you skill and certificate like education in blockchain and you are called blockchain expert. And I would advise this to be taken by any compliance officer who is working uh, in uh, Web3 at the moment, for example, or Web2, but better Web3 because it gives you information, guidelines, uh, details about the blockchain in general. And then you are like more IT skilled. You are like uh, with internet protocols aware with, with the blockchain, the flows, everything. You already understand what you have to tell to your developers to, to maintain highly qualified product. But once again, this program, is it more for lawyers? No, actually, it's uh, it's uh, for anyone who is in this field. Hmm. There is two two parts. One is five weeks when you are blockchain specialist, and there is ten weeks when you are blockchain expert. So you can choose which is more proper for you. Maybe if you maybe you can start with a five week. I I don't know. I would all, always suggest for the ten week, but because. If you are in a high role in your company, it means you have to have high certificates. And if you kind of see from perspective that there is two, one is five weeks, one is 10, and it's virtual classroom, it's actually pretty good education because everything uh, is going on in a classroom. There are experts providing and leaders providing those uh, information the education to you and at the end of the day or at the end of the course you have to create 
new solution or new uh, like company widget that like your final test is not the test when you have to answer questions but is the it's the product that you create together with uh, your teammates oh. so it's kind of really good example when you go through the academic knowledge and then you put those that academic knowledge in life trying to create something based on the knowledge you uh, received mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no i mean very interesting we'll need to put a link to this program for our listeners as well yeah it's actually it's good good yes i also like i'm keen to start it you have to have eight hours a week to <laughs> for studying you have to maintain so it's not uh, not like some kind of webinar mm -hmm. you have to have time for it prepare and be ready to receive the knowledge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, sounds yeah i mean they're very useful and <laughs> then one last practical question so you mentioned that you could also resort to the help of like consultants experts right in the in the legal field. So how much can this type of service cost to a Web3 startup? Uh, especially when you choose with a background and with a CV, where is a lot of uh, records, it will cost more than you think. It's usually they work on hourly base. So it's the question, where this specialist is from and what background is he having so but the prices are more or less as we have seen is 150 uh, euros per hour and it means like usually they can predict the work uh, like that what like the amount of hours they have to input in your work for example you have direct question or theme you provide it and they give you opinion or re report uh, or technical skills how to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's as as i i might say everything in crypto world if we look from company perspective expenses are very high and to keep the balance to provide the best price while there are very high expenses for employees for like IT specialists for compliance specialists uh, it's it's kind of uh, not easy as I can say because no one as a, if you are just a client and come to our widget or any other and want to exchange cryptocurrency you think what's that like nothing nothing has happened but in general it's like years might be even years uh, months of hard work with it specialists with compliance with the uh, ceo business business developer um, developers marketing specialists like to to be in this field to be noticeable and uh, rep representative as a product so and it takes costs and if you do start your product as a test version or any and haven't thought about some kind of regulatory things or IT things that was crucial and you have to redo it. It means you raise your expenses, but you cannot raise your uh, price. It yeah. means it will take more time to have profit back. So apparently the cost of mistakes here, like in the Web3 space are... Huh? much higher yes it's correct because you cannot be because of your your failures your unpredicted risks or mistakes you cannot change your price for the product mm -hmm. if you because it's market there is competitors all around and you have to be unique with a good price compliant high qualified regulated so client can trust you in all kind of perspectives and wow. that's the the thing you that's why we have to work all the team have to work together you have we have to have team meetings to negotiate before product launch before we have to test we have to 
do a lot of things uh, to be aware this product is qualified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I mean, this is a very good note to um, go to the conclusion. So we've covered um, a very wide range of important topics, such as this fragile balance between decentralization and regulation, the importance and the potential of Mika in the EU, uh, those easy and heavy jurisdictions worldwide, right? So let's hope it's going to be uh, useful, it's going to bring value to our Web3 founders. And mm -hmm. then just the very last point, if you were to give a piece of advice uh, to our Web3 founders, um, what would that be? It would be that uh, it's like uh, it's very important to be dynamic because it's very fast growing industry or field uh, for Web3 developers and builders. Uh, I suggest to explore new solutions and pri prioritize user experience mm -hmm. by searching what's in field to to read about failures and take it into into consideration not to put in your uh your product and uh you have to still maintain uh, and be regulated so it's kind of dynamic process using new solutions or creating them but still do research, be qualified, and use only employees with background mm -hmm. if you want a product to be qualified. Okay. And, and if there is option, yes, you can find some new solution how to adopt or interpret, interpret something in new crypto world. It's like vital and uh, that's the essence. Okay. And I encourage everyone yeah to be in this field it's hard process anyway don't don't think it's easy or going to be fast process that's why the startup startup period is two years <laughs> so you will probably do the the product or develop the product mostly all those two two years but it's durable it's absolutely feasible we need to right to believe in yeah. ourselves yeah that's correct correct okay linda thank you very much for all these insights that we got from you today um let's keep in touch and we're looking forward to seeing uh the the growth of swaps app worldwide thank you we'll do our best to maintain our customer and customers happy <laughs> happy with our product and we will also be dynamic and uh, looking to future trends and probably there are going to be Web4 solutions. So <laughs> while the adoption of Web3 will be in action. So it's like happy to be here. Thank you for the interview, et cetera. And yes, have a nice. You too. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Very much. Bye.